Well, uh, is the perpetually tired Call Dude Clem here, or rather, this is Call Dude Clem's... Electronic Workshop, with me, your host, Call Dude Clem. I think it's about time we made a video, isn't it? So, I thought I'd continue on with the homemade tape recorder project. It's kind of an in-between project because I'm still waiting for some stuff to arrive. Got some new resistors, some op amps, and some transistors. I'm still waiting for some diodes and solder to arrive. Alright, so, um, let's do something. I think it's about time to, um, build a proper recording amplifier for the, um, home build tape recorder. Now, this is only going to be a mono tape recorder, sort of like a fun tape recorder project. Okay, so, this is the full recording circuit. So, over here we've got the bias oscillator. And the really cool thing about this is it uses the array set as the actual bias coil. So this array set is doing two things. It's acting as the bias coil and erasing the tape. Obviously we need to get that bias over to the main head as well. So that's just done with a three, 330 picofarad capacitor and a 100 kilo variable resistor to adjust how much bias you actually have. And, and then there's the record playhead. I think I better explain what bias actually is. You see, the thing is, tape doesn't magnetize linearly, if that makes sense. If you tried to put an audio signal straight into a tape head, if you did that, it would be very distorted, it would be almost unintelligible, it would sound pretty much like this. I am now making a recording without bias. I have simply just disconnected the bias oscillator from the head. And as you can hear, all we're getting is just distortion. I'm not even sure if you can tell what I'm saying right now. You may have heard of tape recorders with AC bias and DC bias. Well, here's a tape recorder with no bias. So the bias oscillator makes a very high frequency wave and puts it into the head. And that sort of stirs up the magnetic field, sort of like a pre-magnetization. It's kind of hard to explain. But that way it's going to eliminate all the distortion. So next, let's have a look at the recording amplifier, which is all of this here. So, to start off with, as you can see, we've got three op amps here. So this is the main op amp here, which is biased at half of the supply voltage. Now that's got nothing to do with tape bias, that's a completely different thing. What this does is it takes the input signal here, which comes in through this potentiometer, and gives it a little bit of a boost. Then it sends it into these two other op amps here, which is just used as buffers. And because this one is going to be giving out half the supply voltage, with the audio signal on top of that, that means that I don't need to bias these two op amps, because they're always going to see a positive voltage. So these two are acting as buffers. We've got one here which drives the meter. So first the output from this op amp goes into this capacitor to strip off all that DC, because we don't want that 6 volts or whatever going straight into the meter because for one thing that would peg the meter and probably destroy it. The other thing is you wouldn't be able to tell what level the audio is at so that's why that capacitor is there. And then we just need to rectify the AC audio signal into DC that the meter can actually read so that's what these two diodes here are doing. Now I could have just used a germanium diode but I decided to go with two silicon diodes in this configuration. because. I tried that before, and it works really well. The other thing is that two diodes in this configuration, it's not only going to rectify the signal, but it's also going to double it. So we don't need to boost the signal so much. And then we have this op-amp here, which basically just buffers the signal again, and sends it through all this stuff, and eventually to the record playhead. And I'll explain what all that stuff is. So first we have a capacitor to strip off all the DC, so we're just left with the AC audio signal. And this thing here is the bias trap, which is basically, it's just a fancy name for a filter. And this is tuned to the exact same frequency that the bias oscillator is. So it will stop the bias getting, you know, the AC bias getting into the audio, because, well, we just don't want that, so it's good. It could cause problems. So the bias can get here, but it won't get here. Or at least, that's what it should do. I need to tweak those values, it's not perfect yet. 
And then of course we got a 10 kiln variable resistor to, so we can adjust how much signal gets into the record playhead and well that's basically it, that's how the circuit works. Now I know some of you are going to ask, what about the recording equalization? Well, it doesn't need it. Because we got such a high amount of resistance between the recording amp and the record playhead, it sort of defeats the inductive nature of the head and that way we get a nice flat recording on the tape without the need for equalization. Of course the playback circuit is going to need equalization but that's a completely different thing. That will be yeah, that will be in the next video. In fact, someone has already sent me a circuit that I'm going to try but that's going to be in the next video. Before I do anything though, I want to make sure that I can use this op amp the way I you know, intended to use it. So yeah, this is an LM324, and before anyone says anything, yes, I know they're intended for single rail use, and I know they've got internal biasing circuits in them, but when I bought them, I didn't know that. I thought they were just like any other quad up amp. So, I looked up the pinouts, so I could draw this little diagram here of all the, you know, where all the pins are, and I thought, oh. So anyway, I'm going to see if I can externally bias this chip like you can any other op-amp. So as you can see here, we've got a voltage divider set up on the non-inverting input. So that's going to put half of the supply voltage at the non-inverting input. And I've connected the inverting input just straight up to the output. So if we get half the supply voltage out of the chip, we'll know it's good. We'll know it can be biased that way. So I'm just going to use this little 9 volt battery as the power supply, just for this little test. Yep. Oh yeah, look at that, right on the money. Okay, well it's looking a lot more com um, populated now. I don't know why it's going to say complicated, my mind's not working anyway. So I have my microphone and my microphone preamp hooked up to the input of this circuit. I've got my meter hooked up, so... So far I've built this part of the circuit. I'm putting my hand over the rest of it because, well, that's not connected up yet. So, yeah, let's see if it works. I'm just going to hook up my battery. I mean, eventually this will go on a 12 volt supply, but this is good enough for now. And um, actually, let's just hook that on properly. I saw a little meter deflection when I hooked up the battery, so that's a good sign. I put up the microphone. Hello? Hello? Oh yeah, that's definitely working. I'll turn down the volume a little bit. Test, test, one, two, three. Buh. Yeah, I think we can say that works. Okay, so we're back with the tape recorder project. I've built the entire recording circuit now. All except for the variable resistor that's going to connect the recording amplifier to the tape head. And I'm powering that all on this little power supply that I made. And I've come up with a temporary solution for the um, quote-unquote webcam problem. So, I've got this camera pointed at my scope. And that's going into the capture device in my Windows 7 PC. And as you can see, we're getting a nice good picture from the camera. So, we're going to sniff around this circuit and have a look at some scope views and, um, yeah. Okay, they're both recording. Hopefully the laptop is recording with sound as well, so I can easily sync the two together. So, let's just take a little sniff around with the oscilloscope and see what we've got here. So, I've got my ground connected to the circuit ground. Let's just see what the voltage is at our erase head. Okay, we've got about 72 volts peak to peak. And let's see what we've got at the playhead, or record playhead rather. About 36 volts, so that's about where I want it. And how about the amplifier parts? Okay, I'm going to have to turn the scope scale down quite a bit, if I can remember which way is down. Let's put it on about 1 volt. And we want... Oh, it's already on DC, so that's, that's what we want. I'm going to put the line all the way down so we can measure voltages. So each one of these divisions is 1 volt. So this whole circuit's being powered on about 12 volts. Well, not about 12 volts, it is being powered on 12 volts. I don't know where the about came from, but 
Right, let's see what we're getting out of our chip. Let's see what's going into the capacitor that connects the meter. It should be about 6 volts. Okay, we've got about 5.6 volts there, and I can see when I talk, the line's going up and down. I'm just going to go to a bit of a shorter time scale. There you go. So that's about 6 volts right there. Let's just measure that again to make absolutely sure. Yeah, we got an average of about 5.92 volts. Well, that's close enough. And let's see what's going to eventually get into our recording circuit. So if I probe at this capacitor here, we should have about the same. Yep, there it is. So that's working. Or appears to be working. I have this microphone connected to the circuit, so that's why it's responding when I speak. So I've not got the variable resistor in which is going to connect the recording amplifier to the tape head. But first I want to see how well the bias strap is working. So uh, let's just probe up here, see what voltage we have. This is what's going into the bias strap. It's the little filter that's going to stop the bias getting into the audio amplifier. So we got about 34 volts there. Expected it to drop just a little bit. And uh, what have we got coming out of our bias trap, hopefully nothing. Okay, well it's greatly reduced, but that's not perfect. I have to tweak those values until I get something that absolutely completely blocks it. I think that's good enough for this test anyway. I think what we need to do now is actually make a recording on this thing and see how well it works. Because I know you're all waiting for that, so let's do it. Okay, so we're about to do a test. I have the microphone hooked up to the circuit. Well, my microphone's hooked up to a preamp, then it's hooked up to this circuit. But you get the idea. Got a tape in there, all ready to start recording on. So, um, let's give it a whirl. Just got to wait for the leader to get by. There we go. Okay, so I am making a recording on my homemade tape recorder. I have not set the recording levels. I'm just going by what it says on the meter here. I will have to adjust this when I actually get this calibrated properly, but for now let's just see if it's making a recording on the tape and if it sounds any good. Okay, let's play back the tape. Let's see what we got. Playing it through my new go. Okay. So I am making a recording on my homemade tape recorder. I have not set the recording levels. I'm just going by what it says on the meter here. I will have to adjust this when I actually get this calibrated properly. But for now, let's just see if it's making a recording on the tape and if it sounds any good. Okay, that was reasonably good. It sounded a little bit distorted though. I think maybe it was recording a bit too loud and um, saturating the tape. I did try to have a look at what the level meters were saying, but the light wasn't really all that good, so I couldn't really see what it was doing. Right, okay, now I want to calibrate this thing. So what I'm going to do is I want to calibrate the recording level. That's this little thing right here that calibrates the recording level. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put a 1 kilohertz sine wave into this thing and I'm going to adjust the input until the meter is right there on the yellow. And I'm also monitoring on the oscilloscope to see if it's clipping at all. So, blind the 1 kilohertz sine wave. And that is already pegging the meter, so... I'll turn that down so it gets into the yellow there. So right, smack bang in the middle of the yellow. And I can see a little bit of a kink on the scope there. Looks a bit like a class A B amplifier that's not biased properly. That could be because of the chip that I'm using, because I'm not using it in the way that it was intended to be used. But I think that's good enough for this thing. Okay, so I've got a tape ready to record on. So Let's record our 1 kilohertz test tone and see what we get. Okay, that's about 10 seconds, that should be enough. 
Now I'm going to play this back in another deck which has a level meter that can measure the output. Okay, well, according to my Vesta Fires level meters, as you can probably see, we need a little bit of adjusting. And what I'm intending to do is where the yellow is on the meter here, that's where my 0 dB is going to be. So all I need to do is keep recording and playing back and adjusting this so that when this meter is reading in the yellow here, this will also be adjusted so we get 0 dB recorded onto the tape. Well, okay, I've done another test with this thing. Now I've got this all the way as far as it will go, so that's the full 10 kilo ohms. And that seems to be just about right to get um, 0 dB on the tape. So when this meter here is reading right there in the yellow, and that's turned down as far as it will go, that records round about where the, where the 0 dB is on the tape. So yeah, I'm just going to take that out and replace that with a fixed 10 kilo ohm resistor. So that's actually seemed to work out quite well. Okay, this is like take 5 million. Okay, this is cool dude Clem testing his homemade tape recorder. And he does not know why he's talking in third person, so he's going to stop. Yeah, I'm just testing my homemade tape recorder here, seeing how well it works, or rather, hearing how well it works when I play this back. So, Jane! What do you think of my homemade tape recorder? What? You, you what? My homemade tape recorder. Oh, your homemade tape recorder? Well, Clement, Clement the cool dude, your homemade tape recorder sounds very, very good. How do you know, Jane? We haven't played it back yet. Oh, I was just saying, Clement? Yes, Jane? Why do you say tape recorder in that weird way? Oh, well, we've got Cassette Master to thank for that one. Because in one of his videos, he said, I have not one single bit of a clue how to record on a tape recorder. <coughs> so that's why I say tape recorder, in that weird way. <sighs> Oh no, it's Ricky. The typical British teenager, what do you want? Hmm, what are you recording on that thing for? It's so gay. It's gay? What possible reason could it have to be gay? Well, it's gay because, um, uh, it's gay because, um, uh, you can't even think of a reason, can you? It's tape. You just had to get a last word in, didn't you? Yeah. Why don't you use, like, MP3 or something digital? Ricky, no. Besides, this is going on the computer later, so it will be digital. Anyway, I think that's about enough mindless drivel when I'm just making stuff up off the top of my head. I mean top of my head. Hopefully this microphone wasn't messing up too much during the recording so well let's see how this came out or rather let's hear how this came out. Well all in all this seems to work pretty well so I'm sure this video is already like 15 million hours long already so I'm going to leave you with a final schematic of the recording circuit and do some music recording tests. And now here's the final design of my tape recorder. Or the recording circuit anyway. So all I've done is I've just changed that 10k variable resistor just to a fixed 10k resistor because that seems to be about where it needs to be so the bus trap isn't exactly perfect I'll have to screw around with a few of the values See if I can get that anything better, but as of now, it's working really good. Alright, so here we are doing a little music recording test. It's kind of difficult to get the levels set right when the meter's bouncing around so much, but 
We'll see.